Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg has admitted his party let down some of its own women members by failing to properly to investigate their allegations of sexual harassment against the former Lib Dem chief executive Lord Renard. Lord Renard denies the allegations, but Mr Clegg said he would drive through changes to ensure that such allegations would be properly investigated in future. Harassment must have no place in the Liberal Democrats. Abuse of power and position must have no place in the Liberal Democrats. Our party should be better than that. And in the last few minutes, the women's minister, Jo Swinson, has had this to say. A number of women confided in me about similar experiences. We shared the objective of preventing other women from experiencing this kind of behaviour. They wanted to make it stop. The women also had an entirely understandable wish for privacy, which I was careful to respect. So, of course, I didn't name names when I spoke to people in the leader's office to express these concerns. I made sure that further action was taken. And as you know, Dan Alexander made clear that any such behaviour was unacceptable and had to stop. I told the women who had confided in me what I'd done and encouraged them to let me know if they became aware of any subsequent incidents. If there were fresh reports of this kind of behaviour, I would have insisted on further action. Let me be clear. To this day, I have not heard any account of inappropriate behaviour subsequent to the action Danny and I took. Well, we hear from the senior Lib Dems shortly, but first we're joined by, in the studio by Kat Banyard, founder of UK Feminista, an organisation that promotes gender equality. Do you think what you've just heard there kind of takes you anywhere towards feeling that perhaps the Lib Dems understand the gravity of what's been going on? Well, what we know is that all parties are failing to take the issue of women's equality seriously enough. Because the bottom line is, feminism is an unfinished revolution. Many of the legal rights that women won decades ago are yet to translate into reality, such as the right to equal pay. And some rights are under attack. So there have been sustained efforts to reduce women's access to abortion in Parliament over the last two years. And we're also seeing the effect of the government's programme of cuts turning the clock back on women's equality and threatening to undo many of the gains that have been made. How far do you see Parliament as the villain of the peace, or one of the villains of the peace, in the sense that Nick Clegg this very day has attacked Parliament as a men's club where, you know, only one in four uh, people are women. Uh, do you think that that's at the core of the problem? Well, as you say, women are outnumbered in the, the corridors of power in this country. Um, and women have spoken out about sexist attitudes and cultures that exist there. But let's not forget, this isn't just an isolated case, that sexism and violence against women exists across the country and in workplaces up and down the country. And for too long, issues such as this have been swept under the carpet and not treated as the serious political issues that they are. So it is crucial that the discussions that are happening now around high-profile sexual abuse cases and mm -hmm. sexual harassment cases are acted on, that we use this as a tipping point to galvanise action in government and across the country to start tackling violence against women. But when we talk about feminism, what happened? Because, I mean, when I was your age, feminism was really taking hold and the women's liberation movement was strong and powerful, very well represented across the community, not in Parliament, obviously. But there was then a lull, and it seems that your generation are having to pick up the battle. What happened? Well, as you say, feminism was sidelined um, as a concept and as a movement very successfully. Who and do it, you blame? Well, it wasn't an accident. The whole point is that feminism challenges privilege and it challenges profit. But what is really exciting right now is that across the UK there is a resurgence in grassroots feminist activism. So we're now talking about feminism. Feminism is back in the headlines, on the streets, and in our everyday conversations like it hasn't but, but, but been for decades. But in those decades. days, the feminists were on the streets. The feminists are not on the streets now. They are where? 
they are on the streets and in fact there'll be thousands on the streets of London tomorrow at Million Women Rise and we've seen the number of grassroots activist groups double in the last two years. Um, yesterday UK Feminister launched Generation F which is supporting young people to take action for women's equality because what's really heartening is that it's young people who are starting to come to the forefront and take action in their schools for instance mm. and this is incredibly important because what we know is that one in three girls at school experience sexual harassment on an almost daily basis. Right. Well, now, uh, we can bring in somebody who was very much at the forefront of uh, women coming forward in politics, at least all that time ago, and is still at the forefront of women in politics, Shirley Williams. Um, Shirley Williams, do you think that the, uh, that the party has dealt robustly enough with the issues that have besieged it over the last uh, few weeks? Yes, I do. I think that they uh, dealt with it as effectively as they possibly could. Uh, don't forget, again, there are no, there have been very few clear allegations. What we've done is set up a complete structure, not just for now, but for the future. And that was made very, very clear in an outspoken speech by Nick Clegg this afternoon. Well, Nick Clegg really does seem to have taken both the allegations, which are denied, of course, but the allegations against the former chief executive uh, and, and, and the whole issue of sexism and indeed the lack of women in politics very seriously today but I think at the beginning you felt that this was all got up by the media oh no I didn't what I do think has been got up by the media was the I think the level of the attacks on Nick given that I think he took the steps he could take in the circumstances of no serious individual allegations were completely adequate and what he was treated as doing was somehow escaping from the whole connection and uh, saying one thing one day and one thing the next. That really wasn't true, and that's what made me very cross, because it went on day after day after day as if nobody else had ever had a situation like this to deal with, and, of course, all parties have had, sadly. Are you shocked that uh, nearly four decades after you were first in Cabinet that there are still so very, very few people in... Uh, women in politics, and who do you blame for that? I think, John, part of the trouble is the clubbiness of British politics. It's not just politics. Exactly the same is true, as you know, as well as I do, with the city, with the big businesses and so forth, that there is a great deal of clubbishness and it tends to exclude women. And I think that that's a particular characteristic of Britain, which incidentally nowadays is number 68, number 68 in terms of the proportion of women in Parliament. But you could say just the same about the judiciary and just the same about uh, the big banks. It's a very bad record, and I think it flows from this extraordinary clubbishness. But if you're talking to our much younger guest, no disrespect to you, but Kat, Kat Banyard here, what encouragement can you give to her that anything is actually going to change? I mean, she, she is going to be part of a very big demonstration tomorrow of young women. Uh, what, 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 honestly, what signal can you give her that there is actually going to be any change whatever in the next 10 years? Well, I think that, that, that a change is coming. It's just so extraordinarily slow. But if you look at some areas, for example, medicine, uh, teaching, academic life, in science, in all those areas, women are surging forward. The places where it really is going wrong is those which are still heavily controlled, either by a relatively small number of the political elite who are almost all men, or in some cases by professions which are dominated and keep women out. So uh, I think it's changing, but it's changing awfully slowly. Baroness Williams uh, and Kat, thank you both very, very much indeed.